Welcome to rebuilding a model steam plant, part 39. Turning the top cap to size using a simple method. Followed by drilling and threading the centre hole for the condensate drain valve. And soft soldering all of the parts together. This cap is almost round. Not perfectly round as it was cut freehand on a bandsaw and cleaned up on a belt sander. To make this job successful you have to observe two things. The first being make the cap oversize initially and don't get bogged down with technicalities. I used the ruler to cross reference the centre point. The cap was initially two and three quarters of an inch in diameter so by using a ruler around the cap and making a felt tip pen mark at the one and three eighths of an inch point I eventually arrived at a good starting point for the hole which I promptly drilled as you've just seen. Here I'm threading the hole 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch. I started the tap rotation using the drill chuck, then I undid the chuck and finished the job using this old ratchet wrench. The next thing to do is to screw in a plug. This is a 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch boiler plug. I clamped the nut part of the boiler plug in the chuck and rotated the piece of brass. And here, by the way, you can see that it's not exactly in the centre, despite my efforts with the ruler. That's why when using this method, it's very important to make sure that the blank that you cut is oversized. This is only a disc of brass, but it's quite a large diameter. As I'm going to machine the edges of this brass cap, I need to make sure that it's firmly held in the chuck. So I centre drilled the other end of the plug and supported the whole assembly with a live centre held in the tailstock. Now I can start turning the edge. In this highly magnified image you can see very clearly how out of round the cap is. And that really is just because I cut it on a bandsaw. It looked okay on the bench but now it doesn't look so good. Yes, I could have made it more accurate, but then I wouldn't be able to show the shortcomings of using a careless and inaccurate method. This is, after all, designed as a tutorial for beginners and intermediate people. At the end of the day, it's down to speed, and after a very short time, I now have a perfect cap. All I have to do now is remove the boiler plug, deburr the centre hole, and it's ready to be soldered in position. This is why the cap has a hole in the middle, is to take this valve. This is the condensate drain valve. And I will drill the underside of this valve to take a piece of pipe that goes all the way to the bottom of the tank. Well, almost anyway. Here's the story so far. The kit is nearly complete. I may have to modify the length of the long pipe sticking out of the side to suit the boiler, but that's a very simple job. Before I fit the caps to the top and the bottom of the condenser, I need to soft solder the internal components so they don't leak. This is not a pressure vessel, but it still needs to be watertight. I've had this tub of flux for years because I don't use very much of it, although when I think about it, over the years I have used it a lot for making condensers. I used to make and sell condenser oil traps for model steamboats commercially. What I'm doing is brushing some of this flux around the areas where I want to soft solder. And because the soft solder that I'm using is multi-core soft solder with an inner flux core which is made of some sort of resin, it's a belt and braces approach. It's most important that all the parts you're soldering are clean. And this is the same for silver soldering. But this is not silver solder, it is soft solder. Because soft solder is actually silver, it confuses some people, but it's entirely different to silver solder. And its melting point is very much less than silver solder. You can see the solder running down on the inside of the tank. This is not a problem. It's only because, as usual for the video, I hold the solder in place a bit too long. And after all, it's better to have too much solder than not enough. With the flux boiling away around the joints, it looks a bit untidy. But there is a simple solution. You just use a paintbrush dipped in some water to brush away any flux residue. And while the tank is cooling, it's top tip time. I need to drill a mounting hole in each corner of the base. 
So what I do is draw a line between each corner and then simply hold a washer over the line. Then I just draw a circle on the inside of the washer on the lines as shown here. Not perfect, but near enough for rock and roll. In the centre of each of these circles that I drew on the brass, I drilled a hole 964 of an inch in diameter, which is clearance size for 4BA. I'm just checking the scale and it's perfect. The cap is inboard of the holes on the base. The next job is to clean off every trace of the lines on the base using a piece of Scotch-Brite. And then in the outer part of my workshop, using the one inch belt sander around the edges. I'm doing this by eye, keeping my eye firmly on the holes so everything lines up. It's time for the soldering operation, so I deburred the base first, then give it a thorough clean. And here it is, ready to be soldered. I've mentioned before, and I will mention again, it is very important when soldering to make sure that all of the parts that you're soldering are clean. And here I've just cleaned the tank. What I'm going to use here is some Friar Lux paint. I'm going to paint this inside the tank, so when it melts it will run down and form a really nice fillet on the inside. It's very important to make sure that this is in the position you want it to be, because once it's soldered, well, you can heat it up and move it, but you don't want to do that. So make sure you get it in the right place before heating it up. Using my trusty Siva blowtorch system, I'm applying the heat to the outer part of the tank. And as well as the Friar Lux solder paint, I also added some electrical solder, and once again, from the inside of the tank. A good guide that you have enough solder, as usual I've used too much, is when you get a ring of it around the outside. What I'm doing here is enlisting the help of a set square to just make sure that the fittings line up at 90 degrees. Everything seemed okay and I left the tank for it to cool. Time now to fit the cap and once again I'm using some Friar Lux solder paint for this job. I'm painting a generous amount on so when it melts it will start to run down the inside of the tank giving me a very good soldered joint. For this part of the job, I cannot apply the solder from the inside like I did with the base. And for that reason, I'm applying the Friar Lux paint right to the edge. As I heat everything up and apply a little bit of electrical solder, it looks like this. The cap is in the correct position, but around the outside edge it looks a bit messy. Once again, this is taken care of just by using a paintbrush and a pot of water. To make this work though, you need to keep the part hot. Just remove the heat once all the parts are clean. And that's it for this one. I'll leave you with a shot of the part cooling. In the next episode, I will clean up the tank and fit it to the boiler plant. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.